Hello everyone and welcome to the video dealing with the product to sum and sum to product identities. Our skill objectives for this uh, particular video are one is to express products of trig functions as sums of trig functions and number two express the sum of trig functions as product of trig functions. The conceptual objectives on here are to one understand that the sum and difference identities are used to, der to derive the product to sum identities and number two, understand that the product to sum identities are used to derive the sum to product identities. So we'll look at uh, examples of each of those in this video as well. The product to sum identities are, uh, there's three of them as you can see here, and they are as follows. Uh, number one, the cosine of A times the cosine of B is equal to one half cosine of A plus B plus the cosine of A minus B. The sine of a times the sine of b equals one half cosine of a minus b minus the cosine of a plus b. And the sine of a cosine of b equals one half sine of a plus b plus sine of a minus b. Now these particular identities, uh, what, what's going to happen with them is they, they are, as their name is, says, you take a product and you express it as a sum. So that's really what we're going to be looking at with these particular identities. The proofs of all three of these can be found in the book, uh, but I'm just going to show you the proof of one. Uh, and that proof is uh, the proof of sine of A times the sine of B. Now what I want you to do is recall that we have the from the sum and difference identities for cosine that the cosine of A plus B is equal to the cosine of A cosine of B minus sine of A sine of B. And the cosine of A minus B equals cosine A cosine B plus sine A sine B. So we're going to use these identities to come up with a, the sine of A times the sine of B. Well, you'll notice that that happens to occur right here in that second part. The only problem is right now, if I was to add these, that would actually drop off. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out by taking the opposite of that second of the of this particular portion right here. And so when I do that, that's going to be the opposite there, make this a plus and that will be a minus there. And so when I combine these now, the cosine a cosine b's will drop off. I will have 2 times the sine of a sine of b equals the cosine of a minus b minus the cosine of a plus b. And then to just solve for uh, the sine a sine b, we multiply through by 1 half. And so that's where we end up with the identity that sine of a sine of b equals 1 half times the cosine of a minus b minus the cosine of a plus b. And the proofs for the other two are very similar to this. Uh, the proof for the cosine of a cosine of b actually uses these same identities and you can, see, you can almost see exactly how that would work out. And the proof for the sine of a cosine of b is using the sine angle, sine uh, sum and difference formulas. Let's take a look at an example here. We want to, in this case, the directions are going to be to write as a sum or difference. And what we're going to look at here is uh, cosine of 10x sine of 5x. Now, to do this one, because I wanted to match up with our formulas as much as possible, and realizing that multiplication can be done in any order, I can rewrite that as sine 5x cosine of 10x. And now, remembering my uh, uh, product to sum formula, the sine of a cosine of b equals one half sine of a plus b plus sine of a minus b. So I have the sine of 5x cosine of 10x. Notice the 5x is in the a spot, the 10x is in the b spot. So it's going to equal one half sine of 5x plus 10x plus sine of 5x minus 10x. So combining the like terms there, I get that's equal to 
uh, one half sine of 15x plus the sine of negative 5x. And remembering our even odd identities, because sine is an odd function, this will become one half times the sine of 15x minus the sine of 5x. That's, and that now we've now written our product up here as a sum or difference, in this case a difference right there. Now let's take a look at the sum to product identities. In this case, uh, there are four, and that makes sense because when we're looking at these, uh, we're looking at either the uh, sum of two sines or the difference of two sines, and then the sum and difference of two cosines. So in this case, uh, we have that the sine of A plus sine of B is equal to two sine of A plus B over two, cosine of A minus B over two, Sine of A minus sine of B is two times the sine of A minus B over two, cosine of A plus B over two. The cosine of A plus cosine of B is two cosine of A plus B over two, cosine of A minus B over two. And the last one, cosine of A minus cosine of B is negative two sine of A plus B over two, sine of A minus B over two. Now these particular identities do come from the product of sum formulas. Uh, and to see that, what we're going to do is we're going to go and think of these things, uh, the product sum, in terms of x and y. So let's take a look at that. We're going to prove that the cosine of a minus the cosine of b is equal to negative 2 sine of a plus b sine of a minus b. In other words, number 4 on the previous slide. So what we know right now in terms of the um, uh product to sum is that that one half times the cosine of x minus y minus the cosine of x plus y equals sine x sine y. Now I like this one. I'm going to use this one because we want to have a product at the end of sine of, of two sines. And what I'm going to do now, notice I've, I've made the a's and b's and x and y's. Well what I'm going to do is I'm going to let x equal a plus b over 2 and y equal a minus b over 2. So when I plug these values in for the x's and y's up here, I will get 1 half times the cosine of a plus b over 2 minus a minus b over 2 minus the cosine of a plus b over 2 plus a minus b over 2. And that's going to equal the sine of a plus b over 2 sine of a minus b over 2. And what happens there is this piece right there, because I got this, this negative sign, it's subtracting everything, so it's going to go to the a and b. This is going to become 1 half times the cosine of 2b over 2 minus the cosine of 2a over 2. And that's going to equal the sine of a plus b over 2, sine of a minus b over 2. And simplifying that, that becomes one half times the cosine of a minus or cosine of b, sorry, minus the cosine of a, and that equals sine of a plus b over two, sine of a minus b over two. Now the one thing we have up here, notice, remember up here in this in here, we're looking to find the identity for cosine of a minus cosine of b. Right now I have cosine b minus cosine a. To go and solve that, switch that, I'm going to pull out a negative. That's why we have the negative on the one half now. So when I pull out a factor of negative one from this, it's going to change the sign on each of these. And so that will now be negative one half times the cosine of a minus the cosine of b. And that still is equal to the sine of a plus b over 2, sine of a minus b over 2. To finish it up, to go and put it into the, to match, so it matches the identity up there exactly, what I do is just multiply through by negative 2, in which case I get the cosine of a minus the cosine of b is equal to negative 2 sine of a plus b over 2, sine of a minus b over 2. And so we can just say QED, meaning that it has now been proven that this is that these are that this formula is actually an identity. Now let's take a look at a couple examples involving the product of sum formulas. One of the things we're going to ask to do is they're going to give you an expression and they're going to ask you to write it as a product or sum. So in this case we have sine of 10x plus sine of 5x. And so what I'm going to do on this one is remember my uh, sum to the we want to write it as some, my sum to product here. Sorry. 
Sine of A plus sine of B is 2 times the sine of A plus B over 2, cosine of A minus B over 2. So in this case, sine of 10x plus sine of 5x, A, it, 10x is in the A spot, 5x is in the B spot. So that's going to be 2 times the sine of 10x plus 5x over 2 times cosine of 10x minus 5x over 2. And when I simplify it, I get 2 times the sine of 15x over 2 cosine of 5x over 2. And so now that would be my final answer in this problem. The next thing we have is verify the identity. And we want to verify that sine of A minus sine of B over cosine A plus cosine B is actually equal to the tangent of A minus B over 2. So to do this, what we're, going to, what we're going to want to work with up here is we're going to use the sum to product formulas to write the sine of A minus sine of B and cosine of A plus cosine of B as products. So we know sine of A minus sine of B is equal to 2 sine of A minus B over 2, cosine of A plus B over 2. And the cosine of A plus cosine of B is 2 cosine of A plus B over 2, cosine of A minus B over 2. And let me close those parentheses off. And so what happens at this point, we can now reduce this. The 2's cancel out because they, they will reduce out. And you'll notice that both the numerator and denominator do have a factor of cosine of A plus B over 2. So we'll drop that off and that off. And so the result here is going to be what's left is sine of A minus B over 2. It's a minus over the cosine of a minus b over 2. And of course, we know that uh, sine over cosine is equal to tangent, so we know this is going to equal the tangent of a minus b over 2. And again, QED, it's now proven. This now does conclude our video on uh, sum to product and product to sum identities. You're going to want to make sure you get all of them written down um, and, uh, be a, and so you can uh, find them and use them quickly uh, because they, do, they will come in handy. They'll make the problems that you're going to be working on in this section a lot faster. So with that, um, I, I think this video is a little bit shorter than normal, I hope. Uh, so with that, I hope you have a, a good evening and we will see you in the next class.